And just like that, it's back. Parlor's finally back online. It's not totally 100% up to snuff, but as you can see here, I got my page pulled up. Uh, there's no none of the old postings that are up there. Yeah, that's some of the growing pains that they're going through right now. And we'll go through all the information that we have at the moment. The new CEO that's there, what the plan is supposed to be rolling out going forward. But yeah, all of the followers are still there. Everybody that you were following, if you were an original member prior to the first shutdown, you can still access your account. Albeit it's a bit of a slog at the moment, but you can, if you aren't using Parler, you can sign up. They're thinking in the next couple of weeks. So obviously they don't have the same server capacity that they had over in Amazon, but it's growing and they're going to figure it out. It's kind of like how Gab, after Parler got torched, they had some growing pain. So it's the exact same thing that's going on. Hopefully it all returns back to normal because I'm just so bloody happy that this is back online and I'm thankful that I won't need to make any more update videos because God damn it, you guys, you took an extra week, but I can kind of understand that. Okay. Uh, it's nowhere in any of the articles that we're going to go through, but I'm just going to go ahead and throw this out there because I think there's something to it. What was going on all last week that had Parler been online could have been used as one of those kind of distractions for a certain team to drag up, defame, and further attempt to ruin, okay? I could have seen this being an opportunity for the impeachment managers to bring up, oh, that far right outlet parlor. It's really not, guys. It's kind of like how they keep saying all the far right are congregating over on Gab. It's it's not even that. It's just a bunch of boomers with traditional values. There's really not a lot going on. And it's great. I do appreciate it. I'm, you know, meeting a lot of cool people over there as well. And that's why I'm super happy that Parler's back online. But I think it was probably smart. They could have. I don't know. There's no way of knowing this right now. Now, they could have been back online last Monday, but they waited the week for the trial to be over, for the impeachment trial to be over. And that was probably a smart move. Like I said, there's no indication of that out there, but that was just one fewer arrow that could be fired out of the quiver for the impeachment team. Because God knows they were grasping at straws at the end. But as you can see, welcome back. Parler resumed social media app after securing new computer servers. Acting CEO Mark Meckler says platform will remain true to its free speech roots and has insulated itself from future cancel culture. And that is a great thing to see. Now, I thought that maybe I missed this with the new acting CEO. But yeah, he just made this statement today before Parler got flipped on earlier this morning. And it was a slog to try to get logged on. But yeah, as you guys seen, I hopped on there. It's sort of good to go. I don't know. I've tried to make a couple of posts and they seem to just kind of poof, go out into the ether. Like I've even successfully apparently commented on another post and I have no receipt for it so i i don't know it's just growing pains everybody's just trying to go back online but i wanted to do some research into who mark meckler is like is he some kind of undercover rhino is does he have some kind of nefarious means like was he kicked out or was john matsey kicked out to replace him to nerf the platform well all the information that's come out is john matsey was the one who was trying to push for more censorship which is kind of weird because the dude was saying that he was all about, oh, free speech, but he was the one who was wanting to throw in the Amazon AI and wanted to limit the scope of the speech just to hurry up and get back online, which for the short term would have been great, but for the long term, it just would have ended up being a castrated version of Twitter, and that's not what anybody wanted. So I don't know, I reserve judgment until we get more information on what happened with Matsy because he's just kind of spurging out at the moment, and we'll see how that ends up. But who is Mark Meckler? Well... He's a 58-year-old Californian attorney who rose to prominence in 2009 when he co-founded the Tea Party Patriots, a grassroots conservative organization advocating for free markets, limited government, and fiscal responsibility. Uh, that's the good Tea Party, by the way. That was before it was co-opted, defamed, and ruined by the Rhinos and the Koch brothers. So he was there when it started, and the Tea Party, yeah, that's exactly what they were about. Meckler left the Tea Party Patriots in 12 and went on to, found, or to found Citizens for Self-Governance, a nonprofit conservative political group best known for its efforts to amend the Constitution and decrease federal spending. Meckler currently serves as president of CSG. So yeah, at least the dude's consistent in his ideology, at least dating back all the way to 2009. So hell yeah. And if this one quoted tweet is anything to go on. Twitter sucks. I mean, seriously sucks. They hate me. They hate free speech, especially conservative free speech. Come join me at Parlor. Dump Twitter. Good man. 
good man. Hopefully he does good stuff because this interview is quite interesting. And it's quite good. Let's take a look. Parlor, the upstart social media platform silenced last month. January 11th. Wow, it's been a long time. Said Monday it is resuming operations under new leadership and with new computer, computer servers. We don't know who's hosting us right now. And I'm sure leftist types are probably trying to hurry up and scurry to figure out who they're going to have to call to try to get the hate speech platform and the preferred method of the alt-right to communicate. Ugh. Are we dragging up more relics from 2016? Well, I seen something from Hillary Clinton that made my stomach turn. So that makes sense. Parler moved to a new computer server farm after Amazon Web Services shut off the social media platform on the 11th. Yes. And now the 20 million users can be, continue to be using their old app. Yes. So if you guys were using Twitter, or not Twitter, ugh, I'm so glad that I can actually speak out because I stopped using Twitter after the lawsuit was filed after they wouldn't take the uh, CP off their website. Because it wasn't a violation of their terms of service. Fucking creeps. Remember, Jack Dorsey benefits and profits off of pedophilia. No, if you have the old Parler app, it still works. All I had to do is just log out and then log back on and everything synced back up. Uh, it's still having some of the problems that you've seen on the desktop website, but that's to be expected at the moment. Carrying on. Some existing users were already live on Monday morning and the rest should have access by midday after the new server's Propagated across the internet, new users should be able to sign up for the service within a week or so, Meckler said. We're off of the big tech platform, so we can consider ourselves safe and secure for the future. That's a great thing. He also said the platform is using artificial intelligence and human editors to police for illegal speech that violates its service agreement, but otherwise it is remaining true to its free speech, no censorship, no censorship roots. We'll be looking and we'll be making sure that they're going to adhere to that promise because the moment that they start caving in is the moment we start fighting back against the platform because they keep trumpeting themselves as being the free speech platform. And that's the reason why Matsy and the rest of the board had their splitting of ways. But so far, so good. I haven't seen any of the heavy hitters off the site, but it's also literally within the first hours of being up there. So, and here's where we're going to springboard off to another topic. One that seems kind of apropos to parlor. Follow me on this. Dan Bongino, a prominent parlor user and shareholder who also said that it would be up last Monday. Thanks, Dan. Anyways, was one of the first to get back online posting stories Monday morning about businesses fleeing New York and Amazon workers moving towards unionization in Alabama. Now we get to shit on Amazon because they were the ones that put Parler in this situation and payback sure is a bitch. Now, this is The Verge. The Verge sucks a dick and they're, I don't know if they're intentionally missing the lead on this, but it's it's very funny what they're trying to do here. Some of you guys might be familiar with this story because it is a few days old at this point, but it's nonetheless any significant measure less relevant. Alabama warehouser, Alabama warehouse workers prepare to vote to unionize. I've said it before, but I'll just summarize my opinion on unions quick. They long outlived their purpose. Their purpose was in the beginning was to make sure that Unions had a, f or that the workers had a fair say against oligarchic companies, and they've since grown too large to really perform any sort of meaningful reform or change. But in this case, that originalist context of what a union is supposed to do is exactly what they're doing. So I'm very much for this union, okay? Because you hear horror stories about people who work for Amazon all the time. From warehouse staff to delivery workers, it doesn't seem like it's a great place to work. Sure, they get compensated fairly, but they get treated like rats in a maze. And it's not pretty sometimes. An Amazon warehouse in Alabama could become the first to unionize in the United States for seven weeks... For the next seven weeks, employees at the Amazon warehouse in Bessemer, Alabama will vote on whether to become the first of the company's U.S. employees to unionize. Now, why would it take, if they were just going to vote, why would it take seven weeks to do so? Hmm, that's interesting. The only other U.S. Amazon employees to make it as far as a union election was a smaller group of maintenance workers in a Delaware warehouse in 2014. And that effort failed after an aggressive anti-union campaign from a company that has long been hostile to worker organization. The vote in Alabama at a warehouse outside Birmingham called BHM1 
comes as a pivotal time in the company and its workers. Amazon is emerging from the pandemic in a stronger position than ever, posting records earning. And Jeff Bezos, what, almost doubling his net worth or a little bit better? But he's stepping down as being the CEO, so you know what? He's still going to be on the fucking board and just in a reduced capacity because he already made his b -b billions opening new warehouses at a rapid clip and hiring hundreds of new workers a day, which is good. They should be applauded for that. Except they just need to improve their working conditions, but with more warehouses and more workers, that would naturally take place. But that's not the entire point, because the vote here is being the thing that's questioned, which I love to see it. Those workers, however, have become increasingly vocal about the fact that they haven't shared in the company's success. Ugh, this is where unions start to lose me. Last year's wave of protests and walkout over COVID-19 safety measures ugh, and other issues won some partial victories. But the Besmer Union, it if it succeeds, would give workers the power to negotiate a contract that could lock in durable changes to wages and working conditions. It could also inspire other Amazon warehouses to organize. Yeah, yeah, so they want workers' rights and all that fucking happy horseshit, but... It all comes down to this seven week long period where everybody in one warehouse has to vote. Okay. And this is where it's great. At the NLRB, Amazon tried to delay the election and have it conducted in person. Oh, okay. Well, that's a good thing. I'd appreciate that. Rather than by mail. Since the pandemic, 90% of union elections have been by mail, but Amazon claimed that mail in voting would decrease turnout. Why would it do that? We just seen an election take place with a record turnout. Hmm. And that, in an argument that echoed misinformation about the presidential election. Oh, Verge, you guys said the quiet part out loud. It would have a greater risk of party fraud and coercion. That is what Amazon is saying about their potential union employees. <laughs> Instead, Amazon proposed setting up a tent in a warehouse parking lot, testing all participants for covid Conducting temperature screening and monitoring the line for social distancing, either using a, a digital assistant or with human teams. Amazon also proposed renting a floor of a local hotel for the NLRB election agents and providing them with chauffeurs and food. On Friday, the NLRB denied Amazon's appeal, reaffirming its position that mail-in voting is safer and that letting Amazon rent out hotels and monitoring voting lines would create an impression of bias and surveillance. Oh man, if you live by the sword, you die by the sword. wonder if for the next couple of years, Jeff Bezos is going to come out in support of voter reform. Nothing would tickle my taint more than to see that happen. Oh, chalk this up as another win on the day because hey, Parlor's back and Amazon is getting their fucking what for us, so you'll love to see it. Anyways, guys, I thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.